but would my life be really full in the complete sense without other people? Well, is having friends necessary to being happy? Leonard Peikoff was asked that question, and he started his answer by explaining the person asking the question was somebody in the Navy. And he says, practically speaking, he can't really connect to other people. He says he has a bad view of people, and he doesn't know what the value is of taking time and energy to find a few good ones. So he basically talks where he can only to his girlfriend. I can't prove for all cases and all situations that it's necessary to have friends. For example, on a deserted island. Uh, our producer mentioned that before the show. Yeah. But I think you could be happy even if you're alone or imagine at least a period in your life when you're so involved on a creative project night and day that anyone else would simply be a distraction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we talked about that, James, in the context of romance in the film Whiplash. Right. A great example of romance could have been there, but not if he was to achieve his ends. Right. Right. It's a question of hierarchy of values and context. There have been times in my life where I really needed to kind of be an, a, a loner. Not lonely, because there's a huge difference between being alone and being lonely. I, 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 you know, I like the company I keep. <laughs> I'm a good, honest, rational person, so I have no problem keeping my own company, and I enjoy keeping my own company. And that, I think, is an important point here. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, uh, even when I'm done with that, time I need to be alone and finish my project. Is there a value to sharing it with other people? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so it's great that Dr. Peikoff lays that out to say there are exceptions. Yes, that's going to happen. But and then he says, apart from exceptional situations like this, I think there is a natural, rational desire for friendships. Because you live in society, your life depends on the kind of people among whom you live. Those are the people with whom you trade values. It would be quite different if they lived on the moon. They were irrelevant to you. But they're part of your life if you live in society. If you say, well, none of them are any good. Well, that is the malevolent universe premise, as Ayn Rand called it, the idea that there is no use trying to pursue values because it's hopeless in this life. Yes, finding friends takes time and effort, and you may not find very many, but I believe that it's worth it. For, su for success or full enjoyment of life. You can achieve this with only partial good qualities in people. You don't have to look for the perfect person who fulfills all your values. If you're talking about friendship, well, you can get a lot of pleasure out of someone with talking about, or excuse me, with whom you share some values, even if not all. Now, of course, if you're trying to find people and you just hit a dead end, you know, maybe because you're on a ship, or you just can't find any, well, then thank God you've got your girlfriend. You know, she's real. She will easily fulfill your social needs, I assume. So you're lucky in that. And that's the end of Dr. Pigoff's answer to that particular question. But what's amazing to me about living in 2022 is that even if you're on a ship, we have Ayn Rand's writings. So we have clarity in terms of what values are and what that looks like. And what we could reasonably talk to our shipmates about, even if we don't have a lot in common. And we've got this crazy internet thing. Yeah, what a wonderful thing. We're using it right here and now. I can connect and I connect almost every day with people across my country or across the world in the most astonishing way. I've developed real relationships where we can really interact. And, you know, the point Dr. Peikoff makes here too about you know, no, we're all individuals. No one is going to perfectly mirror my own soul. The idea that I'm going to find all my values in one person and one friend is frankly unrealistic and not desirable even. It's the differences that people, my differences that I bring to the table and the differences that my friends bring to the table, that's a huge part of the value, as well as the sharing and commonality. But for gosh sakes, I've got my friends in certain contexts and at my friends for other contexts. If, for example, I'm devoted, and this is not me, but let's say I was devoted to playing basketball on the weekends. And if I have my basketball friends, it really doesn't much matter to me what their politics are. If they are being, you know, what I need in that sense, rational, uh, you know, uh, enjoying it in the same sort of way I am, getting the same physical and 
companionship value from this, challenging one another and so forth. That person can absolutely be a friend, absolutely be a high value to me. And uh, we're, I'm never gonna find a friend who matches all my values across the board. Um, I think part of it is an unrealistic view of what other, what any one individual could ever do for us. Um, even, and I'll go this far, even in our romantic lives. Now it's true in our romantic lives, we reach a point where the gratitude and the admiration overspills and becomes love. And you say, well, it's this whole person that now I'm devoted to and I'm in, I'm, I'm in love with. But even there, you're not gonna find a person who's your clone. And in fact, the differences, the complementary differences are part of the, the wonderful thing about a romantic relationship. Um, so yeah, if you don't have an, listen to how Ayn Rand says it about romance, but it applies to friendship too. To say love, I love you, one must first be able to say the I. This goes not only for romantic relationships, but for all of our personal uh, relationships. If I don't have an I, to bring to our friendship, Robert. And if you don't have an I to bring to our friendship, well, there's really no value for us to exchange, actually. We could be a boring echo chamber of just agreeing with each other, but that would only be, uh, you know, uh, one, actually one modest part of the value. So much more of the value, our interaction as individuals would be lost if we didn't have a firm and distinguished sense of ourselves and maintain that distinguished sense of you and me. Um, that's all I can say. You know, philosophically, the way we ask the question is, do we need other people? And Peacock gives a really precise answer here. Could I survive on a desert island? Could I find some contentment even on a desert island? But would my life be really full in the complete sense without other people? Could I be completely happy? Look at it this way. Most of the things I know, I learned from other people. Uh, living in a division of labor economy gives me a prosperity and a standard of living I could certainly not achieve on a desert island. Do I need the art that great artists have provided? Is that a vital value to me? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Even forgetting the idea of romance yet. All these other ways in which living in society greatly enriches and enhances my life. I could summarize them by saying to, to people who are fans of Ayn Rand, wh what value has Ayn Rand provided you? Do you need Ayn Rand? Uh, let me ask it in that sense. Well, could I have gotten by without Ayn Rand? Sure. But as an artist, as a provider of knowledge, are those really pyramid values for me? Yes, yes. But I'll go through each of those values again. Look, the division of labor economy, for me to get the advantage of that, I've got to pull my own weight. Uh, knowledge, if I'm going to take advantage of this knowledge of the past, I've got to learn it and see it through my own eyes authentically and know it for myself through with the evidence and logic. For me to gain the advantage of knowledge and trade and art, I've got to be worthy, in effect, of the artist whose art I'm looking at. They have to be a reflection of my values. If I don't have an, a self, an independent self, to bring to each of these moments that I get value from other people, I'm not really gonna get the value from them. I'm never really gonna get the value. And it's especially true, now I finally get to romance. It's especially true in romantic love. You have to be, you'll be a codependent on someone. You'll begin an unhealthy relationship if you don't begin that romance with a firm sense of self and your boundaries and what your needs are and what your desires are. That is required for a healthy, uh, personal relationship. So once again, it's that I component that makes this usefulness and value, which is huge, that other people bring to the table. But for me to access those values, I've got to have a firm sense of self. Yes. Yeah, we I think of the stories of Narcissus and we think, oh, they're anti-egoism. No, there is the case of being with somebody but never actually seeing them, of being, of thinking so much that you know, nobody else is good because nobody else is like me. One of my favorite talks in objectivism is the talk that Greg Salmieri does on uh, optional values, which he calls personal values in the talk. Yes. And it, it's such a good talk for clarifying, you know, you know, what things are universal and right. what things are not. And it's, 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 we, it's so easy to judge other people harshly 
if they don't regard what we think is important as important. But once you understand that, well, here are the principles, and then here are the boundless applications, then we can find friends who don't necessarily share our taste in literature or our taste in music or our interest in sports or whatever the specific values are. Objectivism. All my friends don't need to be objectivists. Now, it's true that there are certain elements, I mean, they have to be this side of rational. They can't be violating my rights. They can't be dishonest people. So the substance of objectivism, I will use to judge other people. But the fact that they don't agree with all the principles of Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand's philosophy is really doesn't address all the other things that human beings can be for me. You know, you're my music buddy, you're my basketball buddy, you're my, and uh, do I still require a certain level of virtue from them? And in fact, the greater the virtue, the more value do I gain from them? Absolutely. So that's a vital thing that I'm bringing objectivism to the table to judge them, but I'm not judging them because they are or are not necessarily a quote objectivist. Right. And, and that's a great perspective. If we, as members of the Ayn Rand Center UK, are going to continue to reach out to people who are not yet fans of Ayn Rand, much less objectivists. Incidentally, speaking of friends across the miles and what the internet makes possible, in the chat, I've got friends right now, some of whom are local, some of whom I only know either through the internet or through Ocon conferences, but just good, good people. And some of them are very, very different than me. But we do have values in common and we have great time, whether it's in person or over the internet. So thank you to those of you who are in the chat and, and there's some good conversation going on there as well. And I appreciate that. And one more thing I'll say about having to have your values line up. There are horror stories and scary movies about people who come along in your life and mimic you who are exactly like you. And almost invariably, it's somebody either trying to manipulate you or take over your life in some way. You don't, it would be scary to meet somebody exactly like you. We want to find kindred spirits. We don't want to find clones. Oh, exactly, exactly, exactly. It's the differences. Thank goodness we're all individuals. Thank goodness we have a goal of our own individual contexts. It can be frustrating if people haven't caught up to our level of understanding of something. But then again, I don't know everything and I'm never gonna know everything. And I have to have some respect for the individual's process of learning and discovering. Uh, but that's also part of the fun of unwrapping the package that is another human being, uh, another virtuous, benevolent human being. Yes. Uh, but it is one of the great joys of life to unwrap the package that is the wonderful individual, for example, that you are, Robert Naser, in my life. So 